Okay, cool. Hi, everyone. So my name is Tamara, and I'm the program manager at CommonStack and a steward in the TEC, uh, Token Engineering Commons. And today we're going to talk about um, getting stewardship right. So we're going to cover a bunch of stuff today. I'm going to try to cover a lot of stuff pretty quick. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is uh, give you a quick intro about the Token Engineering Commons, then talk about why stewardship even matters, and then talk about some of the things we've learned building uh, stewardship in the TEC. Oh, I'm stuck here. Okay. <laughs> Um, before we begin, I just want to say that coordination and leadership is two areas that's really rapidly evolving in the, uh, in the Web3 space. There are traditional practices that we've ported into Web3, and there are new emergent practices that are evolving with the new tools that we have. Um, with these, merging these two together, we can actually create something entirely new, permissionless organizations, permissionless work. And it's these practices we're building that are going to shape the future of human coordination and how we organize ourselves. And it's actually this that I'm most excited about. So I'm excited to share it with you today. And here we go. Quick introduction of the TEC. And the reason I'm doing this is because stewardship practices will actually reflect the organization that they're a part of. And the Token Engineering Commons is a very special and specific organization uh, designed to create long-term, sustainable, regenerative economies to support a public good. For the Token Engineering Commons, public good means research, uh, education, and open source software that uh, will advance token engineering. The TEC Genesis story. So the Token Engineering Commons was a dream of a number of people. Um, Griff Green, Michael Zargum, Jeff Emmett, Angela Kreitenweiss. And um, there's a number of different organizations that participated in creating this token engineering commons. Block Science did a lot of the research. Common Stack did a lot of the research. Common Stack helped design the cultural and technical build, which I'll talk about quickly. And um, the community of token engineers were the ones who decided that they wanted to build a commons to support token engineering, the community, their own community. Development skills of OneHive, Common Swarm, actually built these tools. So there's a number of organizations, and even people, Simon de la Rouvier, who created the bonding curve um, for mechanisms for token, uh, continuous token issuance, and Trent McConaughey, the founder of Ocean Protocol, who are very big early supporters of the token engineering commons. Uh, common stack design patterns. So common stack is the organization that created these design patterns that the token engineering community used to launch the token engineering commons. The technical build is what you expect it to be. It's smart contracts, governance tools, um, initialization conditions, and the cultural build is based on the eight principles that Eleanor Ostrom derived when she did field research into existing commons. Uh, we used to think that the tragedy of the commons was real, and because of her work, work we now understand that self-governing communities can happen. <laughs> and uh, she derived these eight principles, and our entire cultural build was built uh, around these eight principles, Livia de Schermeyer will actually be talking right here on this stage in less than an hour uh, about the cultural build and a framework for self-actualizing economies. So please stick around for that. And as the program man manager at Common Stack, I am particularly interested in developing tested repeatable protocols for stewardship for future economies that will launch their own commons. So the token engineering commons was the very first one and there will be future commons hopefully this year. So that's what I'm here to talk about, stewardship. Um, stewardship is the careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. I'm not going to tell you the TEC got everything right, because we made lots of mistakes, but the benefit of our mistakes is that everyone gets to learn from them and not repeat them. So there's going to be some mistakes uh, we share too. And getting it right is an ongoing process. It, stewardship is not set it and forget it. It's, a, it's, a, it's important, it's a living thing, and its adaptability should be built into it. Why does this matter? I'm going to give you three reasons. Um, the future of work is permissionless. I don't think anyone in this audience is surprised to hear me say that, and probably a lot of people have the same conviction that I do about it. Uh, is there anyone in this room that works for a traditional organization, centralized organization, you have a boss, you have a CEO, you're interviewed, you were hired? 
Okay, maybe that's all going to go away one day. <laughs> um, we see it happening already. We're a part of it. Um, traditional organizations require permission to work. Somebody needs to hire you. Somebody needs to approve the work you do. Somebody needs to make sure you're doing the work that they want you to do. And permissionless organizations displace employment as the front door to work. This is a very great um, Medium article by one of the contributors in the TEC, Gideon Rowe, that I would encourage people to read if they're interested in this. The second reason is that decentralized is not distributed. Um, people from outside Web3, even people inside Web3 may think, wait, doesn't decentralized mean no leaders? That nobody tells anybody what to do anymore? Nobody, everyone gets to um, sort of uh, do whatever they want all the time. But decentralized doesn't mean no leaders. DAOs have to have leadership. Um, those that embody the values of the DAO. Values that can be passed on. Uh, stewards create this thing that will never die. That no matter how many people in the community come in or leave, that when, when stewards come in or leave, this thing continues to exist and the mission goes on. If one leader leaves or fails, the entire organization doesn't stop. Uh, it, the uh, parallel leaders or leadership keeps it moving forward. Uh, because leadership isn't evenly distributed doesn't mean leadership potential has to be. And what I mean by that is leadership potential should be distributed, meaning everyone has an equal chance to grow and rise, merit-based, in a duocracy. So what you do will improve your leadership capabilities the more you stay in the DAO and understand how it works. Okay. And the third thing of why it matters is DAO success is contingent on getting stewardship right. I think um, there's a lot of DAOs that have exploded because of conflict with the people who are leading the DAO or uh, negligence or many different reasons. And I think getting, da getting uh, stewardship right can make or break a DAO, a permissionless organization, the same way it can make or break a traditional organization, a mission, uh, a, a movement, or a, uh, a regular institution. So permissionless, the permissionless nature of DAOs um, this or organic elements, the porous membranes and intertwined ecosystems create something similar to a living organism. They shift, they change, they're almost unpredictable. In a living ecosystem. So why am I showing you scaffolding? Uh, this is a scaffolding many of us are familiar with. It's aluminum and steel, it's strong, but it's inflexible. It's heavy. And when pieces fall, they injure people. I lived in New York City my whole life, I attest to that. Uh, they take a lot of time to erect and take down. Who here is familiar with scaffolding in Hong Kong? It's a marvel. Has anyone seen, walked by one of these buildings? Okay, so not so many people. So maybe the other, other people in this room will be surprised to find out that it's made of bamboo. Simple bamboo rods cheap, sustainable, raw material, lightweight and adaptable. Strength-wise, ratio is far greater than steel. Uh, Strength-weight ratio is far greater than steel. And when they are properly installed, <laughs> far stronger than steel. This is a building that has been scaffolded in bamboo. It's quite common and really extraordinary to see. And it's this idea, lightweight and adaptive, like bamboo, protocols for stewardship, um, that I think are relevant for the changing dynamics of these permissionless organizations. Um, as dynamics change, stewardship is gonna need to change and evolve, uh, and rules will need to change, and the community will change, and the way the community wants their stewardship to behave and act will change too. Uh, and the participants of the economy should have a say. So we go back to, and I may go back to this a few times in this presentation, Eleanor Ostrom's and Eleanor Ostrom's principles. 
And maybe I'll just take one moment to say, if you're not familiar with the work of Eleanor Ostrom, um, she, does so, she does amazing grounds work and field research on uh, existing sustainable commons and won a Nobel Prize in 2009 for her work uh, on self-governing economies. Okay, so above ground scaffolding to underground scaffolding. Mycelium, the term mycorrhiza comes from the words fungus and root, and stewards are the root of the organization. In the same way that mycelium connects plants together, stewards connect work streams together, working groups, guilds, circles, pods, whatever they're called in, in, uh, in your Dow. And instead of transferring water, nitrogen, carbon, and other materials, they transfer ideas, learnings, innovations, skills. Um, and stewards are the Web3, the mycelium of Web3. Uh, in this one uh, image, there's block signs, token engineering, prime DAO, TEC, OneHive, Giveth, Common Stack, Longtail Financial. And uh, there are stewards in each of these who are in mul multiple DAOs and stewarding in multiple DAOs and bring those learnings from one group to another. Um, stewards are the force that nourish the groups uh, within the DAO itself, but most importantly, across many different DAOs. Because we're building organizations that can only thrive if we collaborate with each other. And in fact, in order to compete with traditional organizations, permissionless work, DAOs, will need to collaborate with each other. Or they're gonna eat our lunch. And this is again a nod to principle number eight, nested enterprises. Um, re build responsibility for governing the commons resource in nested tiers from the lowest levels up to the entire interconnected ecosystem. Okay, in this part, I wanna share some of the things we've learned. So some things from past experience we knew how to do, some things we experimented with, sometimes we were successful, and sometimes we fell flat on our face. Um, and learned from it and changed. Uh, but I wanna start with this, because the Token Engineering Commons, we've been building the stewardship group for a year and a half, maybe a little longer even, two years maybe. And after many months of reflection and observation, we really found that it boils down to three base needs. Active and present, steward lead steward servant leaders in the know. And this Venn diagram, the stewards are in the center. Active and present, that makes sense, right? You're on the Discord server, you're available, you're in some meetings. If somebody needs to reach you, ask you a question, they can get a hold of you. In the know, that makes sense. I have a question, how do I do this? How does this token work? Where can I find more information about this? The stewards are the people that hold the knowledge of the DAO and can answer that question. And if they can't answer it, they're gonna go get you an answer. It's servant leadership that I think was the Eureka moment uh, when crafting the, and building a stewardship group. And that's, a leadership philosophy that focuses on the growth of the individuals and the community in which they're a part of. So you can think about leaders as little dictators who tell people what to do, and you could think about leaders as people who become successful by making other people successful. So. Making other people successful is the key to excellence in stewardship. And these characteristics are the 10 characteristics of servant leadership. Awareness, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just talk about a few. <laughs> so the ability to step outside and view themselves and their own perspectives in the greater context of the situation. Listening, so hearing, communicating by listening. It's not an oxymoron. <laughs> Communicating by hearing what people are saying to you. Um, empathy, being able to see other people's point of view and perspective. Building community, fostering and developing the community and the organization, but most important, the commitment to community member growth. So looking for ways to help the community that you're a part of become stronger, develop personal and professional skills, 
and contribute to the organization that you're working on. So, better stewardship. More of this, less of that. So more uh, manifestos. Uh, the stewards are a group. In the token engineering commons, we have a steward working group, and it is comprised of a steward from all of the other uh, 10 working groups, and the stewards meet. Even though it's a stewards working group, it is open and available and uh, transparent. Anyone from the community can come to the calls, can participate in the discussion, can join in the sprint planning, in the sprint retrospective, join the community calls. Uh, it's very, very open. But the manifesto tells you what your shared goals are as a group. Uh, what are your, uh, what does success look like? And what does failure look like? And how do you know if you're succeeding or failing if you haven't uh, written that criteria down? Um, clear on and offboarding. I am just going to jump to this very quickly. We realized that onboarding was pretty easy, but offboarding's hard. <laughs> People get tied to this idea of stewardship as a status, and they don't want to let go of it. And if they don't, if they don't have the time to become a steward, to participate as a steward anymore, they move on to another project, or they um, have a life emergency. They don't want to let go of the title of stewardship. So we made the offboarding process very gentle, so that we can have people offboard. Um, without it feeling like something is being taken away from them. Uh, less of this, back-channel coordination. It's very easy to fall into our DMs to coordinate information, but that quickly turns into a game of telephone. Oh, did who, who told you to do what? Oh, this is here, where did we find that? But having open and transparent um, coordination, we use the Scrum framework, so we have sprint planning, we have a sprint board where everyone can see the work that we're doing, and um, a sprint retrospective to talk about what went well and how we can do better. I'm going to skip the right, se the right seven. Uh, actually, I'm not going to skip it. There's seven key things that I thought were really, that really nailed it. These, are, these aren't mine. This is credit to Aaron Dingman, the host of Brave New World's podcast, and they really nailed it. These are the seven things you need to make sure you're focused on and you have a clear idea about. And the DAO check for stewardship. So wrap it up, <laughs> takeaway is um, DAO success is contingent on getting stewardship right. If you want to make a change in this world, long-term, sustainable, you need a strong, lightweight, adaptive stewardship. Here's how to do it. Find stewards that meet the ba three base needs. Continually develop toward, toward servant leadership. So develop your stewardship team. And work by having the right seven well-defined. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if you, um, any of you in the audience have more questions, um, are you available for a Q&A outside? If yes, with pleasure. I'll be right outside. Awesome. And um, I actually really loved your presentation. Are you going to be posting Thank it you. anywhere? <laughs> yes. Yes, we'll post it. And uh, the Token Engineering Commons Twitter, T-E-C-M-N-S, will be sharing it hopefully in like the next hour or two.